Thank you for your attendance, Mr. Baker. Right, we move on to the appointment of the Chair and Deputy Chair of the District Licensing Committee. Thank you, Fiona. Um, page 80. Um, thank you. Uh, through you, um, Your Worship. Um, so just to introduce um, this paper, I take it largely as read. Um, you'll note that there are um, two options. Um, recommendation A and B are alternates. Um, and the report itself sets out um, the pros and cons of both of those options. Um, and C recommendations C and D are um, standalone. Um, and I note that paragraph 32 sets out um, the remuneration. Um, there may be an adjustment to that to come, um, but we're waiting on that information, so that will be adjusted in due course. Oh. Do I have any questions about paragraph this report? Paragraph 32 of that report. Questions? Hi. Is it me? Hi. Hi, Glenn. Great. Magic McCann. <laughs> uh, I received an um, email from um, Rob McCann. Uh, expressing an interest in the the chair's role. I understand that's probably not going to be a go. Um, if he was interested in the deputy chair's role, what's the process of... Um, what is the process around that? He's uh, He's got a wealth of experience, and I believe he's been on that committee for the last three years, has he? Yeah. So my understanding so is that, that the deputy chair... Oh. Um, is an alternate and is usually appointed as someone from council. However, there would be nothing to prevent Councillor McCann applying to be a committee member um, and go through that process um, that we're um, asking for in recommendation C um, to begin the recruitment of two additional members to the district yeah. licensing committee. Okay, so there's, there's nothing preventing that occurring? Nothing to prevent him um, making an application as part of that process if it's um, that is passed and advertised. Okay, and who makes it um, ultimately makes that decision? Is um, it the chair? So, if um, there is an advertisement, um, a paper would come back to council with recommendations as to um, people who have put themselves forward, and that would be a decision of council as to who is appointed on the district licensing committee. Okay, thank you. Councillor Pavanov. Thank you. Just to clarify um, the, um, this, two things. So, Councillor McCann, or Rob McCann, was the chair in the previous triennium, and I think his um, he was an elected member, so his role his role ended when he's when when he was not re-elected. So sorry, when he his role ended when when. Sure. Did it, what is, well, that's my question. Did his role end as the chair um, on the 8th of October? As one of um, some of the transitional um, arrangements that were put in place at the end of the training, because the district licensing committee is different, and that's why it's not being considered as part of the governance structure, because it's under the Sale and Supply of Alcohol Act. And so as part of the regulatory arrangements in that in-between stage, that committee must continue because there must be the ability for decisions to keep being made for people. So Councillor McCann was appointed um, in that position until this council could make an appointment um, of a new chair. Okay, thank you. So my second question, then clarification, is B. It says the council can appoint the chair of the district licensing committee as well as the deputy chair rather than it, than it ha having to be... Um, um, going through a recruitment process? Um, so the deputy chair steps in in the event that the chairperson was, for instance, out of the country. And so in the last training, the arrangements were that Councillor McCann was the chair and um, her worship, when she was in her position as a deputy mayor, was the chairperson. So didn't sit on the committee usually, but in the event that Councillor McCann was out of the country, for instance, um, then her worship in that deputy role stepped in at that time. So that's the purpose of having the deputy. Yeah, so, so happen clarification, maybe my question wasn't clear, that basically this council can um, appoint both the chair and the deputy chair rather than them having to be recruited. That's correct. It's the committee members themselves. And so each... Um, oh, the committee members, the, the district licence 
in committee? Yes, so when a hearing is constituted, you must have the um, chair of the district licensing committee and two members who com um, form that, um, a sorry, no. that committee at that time. And so that's why we need a pool of committee members because um, they, each time there's a hearing, form that. So it's always the chair. In the event that the chair could not be there, then the deputy chair would be in charge at that committee and then also two members from that pool would also make up the committee. Yeah, so sorry, just further. So, so this is actually about um, the appointment of the deputy chair. So in here, B says, the second part, the second sentence says that council appoints the deputy chair of the licensing district licensing committee. So this council can actually appoint the deputy chair. Yes. Yes, the chair and the deputy right. chair. Okay, thank you. Councillor Halliday. Yeah, sorry, just a little bit of clarity here. On page 130, um, 194, resignation or removal, and just correct me if I'm wrong here, A, a chairperson of a licensing committee ceases to be a chairperson if he or she ceases to be a member of the licensing committee's territorial authority. Yes, and that's why those interim arrangements were put in place to carry us through the period until a new appointee could and be And that made. interim arrangement's a temporary arrangement, is it? It is a temporary arrangement until a decision can be made today. Right, okay. And the other question was, um, with regards to the, you were putting an application, uh, an ad, ad out there for um, members of the committee, uh, you've got a council that could potentially be the deputy chair. Uh, could a council just be a member of the committee? instead of being the deputy chair? Or is there not the uh, leeway for that? So the ability to appoint the chair and the deputy chair is on the basis of that person being a member of the local authority. Right. The committee members themselves are, point, uh, are appointed on the basis of them having the requisite expertise in that area yep. to adjudicate on those decisions. And that's why you'd call for applications and they would submit a CV, for instance, um, in order to allow us to put them forward as being appropriate people to be able to sit on that committee. Okay, got that. And uh, with regards to um, the deputy chair position, the councillor that could potentially be appointed to that would only be appointed as deputy chair, not a member of the committee. In other words, that person would step in if the chair wasn't going, but they wouldn't be an active member of the committee per se because of their skill base. Essentially, yes. Right, okay, thank you very much. Any other questions? Three, two, one. Okay, from the chair, I'm going to move option B, um, that council appoint Nigel Wilson as chair of the district licensing committee, and that council appoint Martin Halliday as the deputy chair of the district licensing committee. And additionally, C, that council direct the chief executive to begin a recruitment process for additional two members. And D, that council note the remuneration of the district licensing committee, etc. Do I have a seconder? Sure. We just have a point of clarification from Councillor Halliday. Sorry, uh, just a little bit of a surprise. I wasn't aware I was being put forward as the deputy. Um, <laughs> surprise! <Yeah. laughs> um, um, as such, uh, so that was just why I was just asked for you. Oversight. Those um, so, uh, if, just just from a clarity perspective, um, the, you're going to be advertising for two other members. So, me being deputy is not going to impact on the additional members that are going to be on there. I'm just standing in for uh, Mr. Wilson over there. If he's not, all right, I'm okay with that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Halliday. Right, just wanted to add. <laughs> Stepping up to the plate, as usual. So, do I have a seconder for that? No, you can't really second it, Nigel. Um, and I would actually expect that those two members abstain from the vote, probably. Seconded by Councillor Warwick. I'll put that to any debate. Anybody want to make aspersions against either of those people or a comment on their past? <laughs> just just, just um, opening the floor for that. Yeah. <laughs> Councillor Vivano. Yeah, in all seriousness, um, 
Irene was sitting around the table when we went through this, this discussion last time, and there's nothing against the person who's been um, selected no. unknown to themselves as the deputy chair, but I thought that um, we had to assure ourselves that they had the right, right qualifications to do the job. Well, my thinking when I thought of Councillor Halliday for this position was his extensive experience in the hospitality industry in this area. And we have had previously, I've been involved in recruitment for the um, District Licensing Committee before, and it's not unusual to have people with a, a hospitality background in those positions. So um, that's what I was thinking of. I hear what you're saying, but it's a case of where, um, if it's not documented, it's not covered off really sorry do you, do you want a cv from both of both of these people well no i think um quite possibly yes no <laughs> re in all honesty no i'm just yeah, fair enough. yeah you know it's just you know this is just good governance i'm sorry you know i'm more than happy that these two people's names that. are put forward but i think really we just need to uh, you know i remember the process that um council mccann you know rob mccann went through and that really we do need to do um, good governance. Sorry. So I'll move an additional recommendation E. On the proviso that the CVs are okay or something rather. Uh, I don't think we can say on the proviso because we're making an appointment. Yeah, do you, do you want to move and do you, what, uh, be, anybody who has a problem with these two people without a CV can vote no, because um, I think we need to make these appointments today, so um, I'm not going to be expect, accepting any amendments as moving okay. when I think about it, but um, maybe we could do that offline, just have a conversation and make sure that you're comfortable with it, Jocelyn, yeah. and maybe we could, Nigel and Martin, if you could send Jocelyn a brief bio and... Um, We'll see how we go from there. <laughs> Councillor Cooper. Uh, yeah, just to follow on, uh, this is, a, um, in my view, a highly technical uh, appointment. And uh, in respect to, we have uh, someone who is a previous chair uh, with uh, experience in governance and the district, district licensing committee uh, who brings a wealth of knowledge in um, Rob and I think that um, that should be explored. Thank you for your thoughts on that. Thank you. Um, so it's been moved and seconded. I don't think either of the nominees should contribute to the debate. Oh, it wasn't so much a debate, it was actually a question. Um, through you, Madam Chair, um, you've uh, selected me um, or put me forward as the Deputy Chair, but I'd like to know if there's someone else in the room or another councillor that might feel that they are better qualified and would like this position. Uh, I'm more than happy to uh, concede if that's the case. Okay. Is there anybody else who's interested? We'll uh, go with that. Maybe of you, Mr Cooper. I'm aware of the workload of some of the councillors as we went through the delegations and governance as well. Maybe um, the proposed chair might like to comment on who he would like as his deputy. Yeah, sure. Okay, thanks. Why so under the bus again. Um, <laughs> just as a as a hearing commissioner and actually a chair of hearing commissions, I think my CV's not bad. Martin <laughs> does have a massive um, background in hospitality, as he kept reminding everybody through the election. Um, so yeah, he has a huge background um, in hospitality and understanding the hospitality industry. And I think if, if that, you made a good point. That's actually a really important part of it. Getting the perspectives of applicants is is important to note. Yeah, that. I think. But beyond that, there's a room full of people who who would be qualified. Yeah, yeah. I think um, having been deputy chair as well, there would be the potential for the chair to consult with the deputy if they were unsure of some issues or needed a head to bang against, you know, I think that would be something that could occur as well. It's not a particularly onerous role, the deputy, as long as the chair's doing the job. 
So um, I'm going to put... Do I have a seconder? Did I get a seconder and we're all in debate? Well, that's all. Thank you. So uh, I'll put that now. All in favour, please say aye. 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 Against. Against. Would you like a division? No, no division required. That's Councilor carried. Kofod. Oh, Councillor Coford. Are you voting? Are you going to vote? <laughs> <laughs> you just do it late so we all look at you, don't you? Don't you? <laughs> Thank you very much, Fiona and Sarah. Uh, one, three, one. Yeah. You should really be deciding on this, shouldn't you? No, let's not be McCrippin. <laughs> should we all be voting for each other, divided <laughs> up? I, can, I could work out how we could do it. I'm lucky because you're not as pleased as you are. Isn't that... Do you want to um, put that motion now? Because I'm not sure that this will take ten minutes. Okay, so seeing as um, we've got 10 minutes until six hours since we started this meeting, we, we need a mover and a seconder to carry on. Do I have somebody to move that? Councillor Halliday, seconded Councillor Wilson. All in favour, please say aye. Aye, against. That's carried. Okay. And now we have elected member remuneration and positions of responsibility, which everybody, except myself, should actually declare a conflict of interest in. <laughs> okay, so this is page 131. Um, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I'm here to introduce the report, Elected Member Remuneration and Positions of Responsibility. And um, the report covers the suggested or the proposed remuneration for councillors um, and elected members. However, community boards haven't been included as part of this report because it's covered under the remuneration authority unless council would make a decision that they would like to up the remuneration of community boards. I would also like to point out that um, recommendation B, it covers the reimbursement for mana whenua iwi whose representation at the table has been passed earlier today. So this reimbursement would then be for each iwi to receive the sum noted and not the individual. It is each iwi will be paid and they can then decide how they would like to send representation to each of the committees. They could decide to send the same person um, for all of the committees, or they could decide to send multiple people, but they would only receive one lump sum, and they can then apply it as they wish. Thank you. Um, Th that was one of the points of clarification that was asked for. Is there anything else to add on the report? Uh, no, I'll just take questions. So apart from that, we'll take it as read. Does anybody have any questions? Councillor Halliday. Three, Madam Chair. Uh, page 133. Um, Number 18 uh, notes that councillors missed the first deadline and will therefore have to meet the second line deadline of 27th of January 2023 with regards to the um, sending off this proposal to uh, local government, the uh, sorry, the remuneration authority, uh, which will not then be gazetted till March. Do I take that to mean that, um, well, I'd like some clarity, that um, fundamentally councillors will be getting paid the base rate until that point? It will be back paid. I appreciate um, back paid. But, yes, um, until that time. point, yes, you will be paid the base rate that's until 30. we have the determination. No. And and then there will be a back pay to today's date. So clarifying that. Tomorrow's date, sorry. No, no, it will be when the appointments are made. Let me just double check the... Um, I've put it in the report, I just can't yeah. remember it. So, uh, just, just for clarity, um, it won't be a tier six payment at 48,000. Um, it would be a um, base rate at 38,000. Uh, and that's literally for the next four months. Correct. 
Correct. Until okay. such time that the determination by the remuneration authority has been gazetted, yes, and then a back payment will be actioned, yes. Okay, so I just wanted to um, express oh. my disappointment that we're in this situation. Uh, that effectively decreases my current wage by a quarter for five months, um, which, yeah, is going to cause some issues. Um, so, yeah, that's significant, in my opinion. Uh, and um, I didn't realise no. that was a situation, otherwise I would have might be pushed a little bit harder for these delegations to have come through perhaps quicker or in a way that would have allowed us to be at least paid um, the um, tier six arrangement until that time. So thank you for the clarity. Thank you, Councillor Halliday. Yeah, it's an unfortunate situation, but a result of the fact that we wanted more time to have discussion around the delegations. Councillor Coe. Uh, just further to that point, I just wonder for those councillors who, for whom uh, the council remuneration is their primary or only source of remuneration, could we make uh, an exception or provide some sort of advance um, that, um, mm. you know, to prevent hardship, especially over this coming summer period, the Christmas period? I think it would be um, uh, rather punitive to to have people in that situation where their remuneration is significantly reduced for that length of time over that, that time period. I think the Chief Executive and Deputy Chief Executive are just discussing that. Thank you for the suggestion. Through you, Your Worship. Um, thank you, uh, Councillor Coe. That's um, a very valid point. Happy to take... Um, direction on that, but first indication uh, suggests that we would be happy to meet um, that suggestion and simply claim it back. It, the, the authority is not going to decline the recommendation of this council. It sounds like we can sort that situation. Yeah, we're going to do, do everything we can. Uh, Councillor Pravanov. Uh, thank you. Um, I just wanted to also make the point that um, when this paper arrived in our email boxes. This is the first indication we had of this delay. And it would have been good to have a heads up on that. Is that a question? It's a comment. Okay. It just shows the further learnings in terms of um, yeah, the implications of this. I suppose I could also ask why it's delayed, but I won't. Um, my other question, um, I've actually got a question that relates to page, it's page on 142, um, it's about the, um, it's 3A1, um, it relates to um, 83 cents per kilometre. I know, that, I know this, was, this matter was raised by an elected member a, a short while ago. Um, I see that this actual determination came into force on the 26th of August, um, and I'm just wondering whether or not that rate has been in place since that point in time. Yes, that was the um, the rate that the remuneration authority put in place at that time. Yes, and a paper came to council, I believe it was the 28th of August, where that was outlined. Okay, and, and so when people have been claiming... Um, mileage they have been, thank you. Correct. Thank you. So also too, um, on page 135, uh, 133, no, 143, sorry, it's getting a bit late in the day, um, there's, an, there's a 12-3 um, 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 mentions um, 40 hours allowance travel time for each hour. And I'm just, um, I'm just looking at the claim form and that's not an option. It probably doesn't happen very often. But is that something that um, that we have been informed about we can claim on as well? So that is in the current policy that you would have okay. been given? Okay. Yes. Okay. So um, one other question. I know that we um, discussed this with the Mayor. Um, she was going to seek clarification on this. It was for um, the remuneration for um, mana whenua, whether it was actually the base rate or whether it was actually um, one of the other rates. 
tier six. Tier six or tier one. No, no, not tier one. So it is tier six. Okay, so that's been clarified. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Ravanov. Any other questions? <coughs> Councillor Wilson. In relation to um, um, uh, for members' claims of expenses, that is, is it an assumption that EWI representatives are able to make those claims as well? So is that written in or is it? Uh, yes, the, there is an assumption that they can make those claims as well. There's also going to be a paper on uh, non-elected, the non-elected member's fees framework that will be tabled with this council. When, when is that going to be tabled? Uh, January. Fantastic. Any other questions? I'm looking for a mover. Councillor Halliday, seconded Dep the Deputy Mayor. Any debate? All in favour? Aye. Against? Carried. Draft calendar of meetings on page 262. Hang on. No, that, that, that's the wrong one. Oh, no. Yes, 262. No, that's... Yeah. So it's in the next agenda. So, other question? Okay. <laughs> I've, I've, I've found the other agenda, the draft calendar of meetings. It's all in the name of a tree. I'll, I'll remind you of that. So um, to introduce this report, we have Steffi again. <laughs> yes, sorry. <laughs> Um, I take this report largely as read. It is the calendar of meetings for the next year and as the report outlines, um, it is simply so we've advertised it, that it can always be changed at um, in discussion with the chair. But this is a first start, so it's the draft calendar of meetings. And I'll take any questions. Questions? Councillor Wilson. I know, uh, <clears throat> I know Councillor Kirby is desperate to have as many council meetings as possible, so <laughs> I, I noted his suggestion that the <gasps> what appears to be an additional meeting on the 26th of January, because some people have less of a life than other people. So, it's on the yeah, it's on the calendar. So, was there what was the reason for popping that in there when it didn't previously exist? Was that just a reshuffling of dates? Because previously, the, we had the 3rd of February was going to be the first council meeting in 23. When you say previously, we haven't brought this report to council? No, 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 the, the, no, no, the previous timetable that we had was in there. Um, oh, it was in the end of the induction yeah. thing. Yeah. Right, okay. Um, as I understand it, there's always been a January meeting at the end of January for council, so that's how that's why it has been suggested. Any other questions? In that case, I'll, oh, oh, yeah, sorry. So pop your microphones on ahead of time, and then we'll stack up a queue rather than um, we'll get there. Councillor Cooper. Hi. Hi, Glenn. There was some discussion around uh, having evening or late afternoon, starting late afternoon and going to evening meetings. Is that appropriate to? Uh, so these, if that's the will of the of the elected members, Can I uh, that? are we able to uh, amend some of these times later yeah, in the year? Yeah, I'm, I'm, hap I'm happy to answer that. The feedback that I've got is with so much happening and so much change happening at the moment that um, staff. Um, are pretty under the pump and just to keep them during the daytime just for now until things settle down um, and then maybe look um, at reviewing it either part way through this year or for next year's calendar but I still have that in my mind too I'm, I'm quite keen on that but I'm yep. also aware of the limitations of what staff can achieve all at once. Great, so it's not off the table, we'll talk no. about it later. Great, thank you. 
Councillor Coe. Yeah, I was going to ask the same question, but also I do wish to point out that um, uh, the gateway discussion has been delayed until the January meeting, and I will be overseas <coughs> on that pr date of that proposed meeting. Uh, poten potentially we could defer it till your return, if that's more appropriate. Well, I don't want to keep deferring at this. <laughs> when, yeah. is it, when will be the next meeting yeah, after that? Yeah, it's difficult when you're not here. So it won't, it'll only be February. It won't be a long period of time. So And, and it could be that it takes that, much, that long to get the information anyway. We'll, we'll, we'll take that discussion offline and see what we can work out. Okay, so any other questions? You still got your light on. Did oh, you have no. something else? Okay, so I'm looking for a mover. Moved by the Deputy Mayor, seconded by Councillor Wilson. Any debate? All in favour? Aye. Aye. Against? It's carried. Calendar of meetings. Are you coming back? No, I, I just wanted to thank Steffi and Morag for the enormous amount of work that's been going on. Are you coming back? You're not leaving. <laughs> okay, so what have we got? Adoption of standing orders. So now we have the adoption of the standing orders for this triennium on page 267. Thank you, Fiona. Um, thank you. Um, through you, Your Worship, um, I do take this report largely as read, um, simply noting that the majority of these changes are minor um, and uh, seeking to clarify situations where there'd previously been ambiguity in regards to the standing orders. So LGNZ has done a lot of work in the background. These are their model orders that they put forward for all council. Um, and also to note, you will see that there's quite a lot of numbering changes. Um, it turns out that our previous standing orders had joined two together and had got us out of step with the model orders. So we've tried to get ourselves back on track with that, and that's why you'll note um, a number of numbering changes. Um, happy to take any questions on that. Any questions? Councillor Halliday. Through you, Madam Chair. Um, just noting 18.5, page 270, uh, release of public excluded information. Um, I guess it was just, I wanted to make a, uh, find out about, I, I brought this up before, about being made aware of what is allowed and um, to be um, publicly available, us as councillors knowing what that is as such, whether there's a process which we th that was talked to, maybe putting a process in place that would allow us to have, know what is um, what we're able to speak to from public excluded as such. Um, there was an instance last year um, when uh, the CU talked talk to some information in the newspaper around the airport, which we thought still thought was publicly excluded, but I think the CEO can decide when it's not. Um, but we just weren't aware that that wasn't excluded. Is, is, do we have a, an ability to put a process in place around around that at all? Um, so there is a page on our website that yeah. contains all of Oh, sorry. Um, there's a page on the council website that has a list of all decisions that have been released from publicly right, excluded okay. um, meetings. Um, and it is generally the practice that when something goes uh, to a publicly excluded meeting, that there's usually a recommendation as part of that if that is to be released from public excluded business. Okay. All right, that's sweet. I think you can go. Uh, the next one I've got here. Can, can I just add to that and just say that if you're if you're ever unsure, just clarify with staff. And the best practice would be to err on the side of caution if you're not sure mm. whether something has been released or not. J yeah. Just before we continue with this paper, how many questions do people have around this? Could could I get a show of hands? Who's got questions on this paper? And how many questions do you have? Okay, we'll carry on then. I was just thinking it's not an urgent paper because we have standing orders in place. So if it's going to take too long, then we could have um, deferred it till the next meeting. Okay. But we'll carry on. But please keep your questions brief. Yep. Uh, clarity. 19.1. Uh, um, 
talks to um, present and voting, uh, adding the words present and voting. How does that, I just want to be uh, clarification, how does that work with Zoom? Uh, are you classified as present and voting if you're on Zoom? You're present in voting, um, but you're not part of the quorum I if you're on Zoom. That. You have to be in the room to be part of the quorum, um, but you count cool. in terms oh, of present and voting. That's what I to on that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Halliday. Councillor Bravanov. Thank you. Um, on Can you press your button, please, Martin? Thanks. 269, uh, 9.13, 1.3. There's a change there. I just want to... Um, understand uh, whether that is directly from uh, Lagoima in terms of the changes that have been made. Sorry, just bear with me while I yeah. find that. Um, you said 9.3? No, 9.13. Page 269. Sorry, my order. pages are different because I've just got the report in front of me. So... Um, Uh, yes. Um, so that is just to be made. That's an item that is simply clarifying. So that was always the case, but the wording has been tightened up to make sure that the intent is more clearly expressed. Thank you. Councillor Cooper. Um, I'm assuming um, a member, as a non elected party, a member? For purpose of standing orders? If they're appointed, so standing orders apply to business that takes place in the chamber okay. in a meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Good question. Councillor Wilson, put your microphone on, please. Page 271 and 272. Chairperson's decision on points of order. Um, I'm not trying to be contentious about this, but um, you know, should a point of order concern the performance of the chair in the highly unlikely event that that would happen, then the chair will refer to the deputy chair, who, if the deputy chair is not available, um, another member. So what's the, is there a seniority around that other member, or is this just who decides who that other member is? Because it's a point of order, so about the chair, which is quite a significant thing, should it happen, so what is the process for determining who that person is? May I suggest that it would be the same order as we have for declarations of states of emergency, just for simplicity, which we're about to discuss and confirm going forward. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and they usually have about, they're usually about four to six deep, so that would be plenty of people. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Cool. Um, well, We'll be discussing that when we have our civil defence briefing next week. So, I'm now looking for a mover and a seconder. Move move moved, Councillor um, Halliday. Seconded, Councillor Bravanov. Question. Oh, no, no, we've finished with questions, Councillor Bravanov. It's 20 to 4. We've got yeah, well, a few more items. You said you had one question and you've had your question. So, I'm putting it to the vote. It's been moved, Councillor Halliday. Seconded, Councillor Wilson. Putting it to the vote, all in favour say aye. 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 Against. That's carried. Thank you. So we're moving on to declarations of interest on page 486, or if you're on your electronic version in the second agenda, it's on page 225. If anybody, if anybody else is attempting such a feat, looks like my deputy is. <laughs> Save two trees. Okay, thank you, Fiona. Thank you. Um, through you, um, Your Worship. Um, this is something that's been spoken about um, during briefings. Um, there have been amendments made to the Local Government Act. Those provisions came into force on the 20th of November. Um, a policy um, has been updated, um, which sets out um, 
members' responsibility in regards to their declarations of interest, um, and it has been updated to take into account those new provisions in the Local Government Act. Um, always being mindful that um, they don't replace members' obligations um, under the Local Authority Members' Interest Act, um, and those two acts do sit side by side. Um, it also doesn't um, take away the fact that members also still need to declare conflicts of interest in a meeting if it relates to business, so simply having it on the register won't um, mean that that is covered. So those declarations still need to be made in the meeting. Um, from an administrative point of view, um, you'll all be sent out the forms. Um, and to note that the due date for the first return is the 14th of February, um, and that covers the 12-month period from the 15th of January 2022 um, to the 14th of January 2023. Um, and that date shifts year to year. It's set out there. Um, we will send you reminders. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free about your declarations or any of the administrative parts to contact the Democracy Services team as usual. And Sarah um, Morty, Governance and Legal Services Manager, has been appointed as the registrar. And the register will be put on the council website. Happy to take any questions. Any questions? <coughs> Councillor Cooper. Oh, just, just the same question as before. Uh, Non-elected members... Um, <coughs> Fill this out. So it's set out in the in our policy that um, appointed members um, will be asked to complete the same form. Thank you. So I'm looking for a mover for A, B, and C. Moved, Councillor Spires. Seconded, Councillor Halliday. Any debate? I'll put that. All in favour, please say aye. 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 Against. That's carried. So, thank you very much, Fiona. Great work. So, moving on to recommendations on waste levy applications, community projects, and business waste reduction. What a shame this isn't going to the waste levy committee where we have such a fulsome representation as a result of our governance arrangements today. So we're on 509 of the paper agenda, 248 of part B of the electronic agenda. Because it started at zero, halfway through the agenda, because it's in two bits. Hello, Eilish, is it? Kia ora, Kia ora Madam um, Mayor. Uh, kia ora koutou, um, ko Eilish toku ingoa. I am the Senior Waste um, Minimisation Advisor. I'm here with Robbie, our Waste Projects Manager. Hello, um, I just um, want to yeah, apologise that this, I know this has been a super long day for you guys all. Um, this normally does go to the uh, waste, uh, waste Levy Allocation Committee, but um, rather than deferring it to next year as those groups are finalised, we needed to sort of bring it forward so that great project can get underway before Christmas. Um, so I'm going to keep it super brief. It is the end of the day. Um, I just want to highlight that the, the grants has three cate categories. Um, this particular uh, report is for the community project and the business waste reduction, um, whereas the seed funding will be discussed separately um, as it has some commercially sensitive information. But um, happy to take any questions with our recommendations um, about any of the projects recommended for funding through the waste levy grants. Councillor Halliday. To be Madam Chair, I'll try and be quick. Um, question. Uh, these figures don't seem very high. I was just curious to know why. I'm assuming the third one is the um, what we were discussing in the publicly excluded. Um, but yeah, I just you know we're, we're trying to encourage this sort of thing. We're getting the thirty dollars per ton coming in. I'm um, just wondering why it's not higher. Yeah, absolutely. So the majority of what that extra waste levy um, is funded towards the seed funding. Um, we, you, but you are right, there was 10k available under the business waste reduction category. We did only have two, I, yeah, almost that. three. Um, and that's, we had many conversations with businesses who didn't end up applying. Um, so we've sort of found that this particular timing and process doesn't work so well for businesses who can get quite busy just out of the blue with other projects that have higher precedent. So, then they put these projects that they would be wanting to apply for on the back burner and then the timing doesn't suit. So we will be reviewing this process um, and maybe providing like a shortcut process or something that maybe can boost um, 
the applications to, specifically under the the business waste reduction category, which you're right is under allocated this it's year. But yeah. in this case, um, it's been fortunate because we've been able to move that over to cover the oversubscription in the community projects category. And it's great you had the flexibility to do that. Um, look, it sort of answers my next question as well, but I was going to suggest that maybe the community boards, I know the community boards are developing um, the comms pathways and networks in their communities. That might be something that they might be able to tap some people on the shoulder as well with regards to that sort of one too as part of your review. I'm sure. All the more reason to have all the community boards on our waste levy yeah, committee. <laughs> <laughs> um, have the groups that have received less funds, um, if I remember correctly, um, we didn't necessarily allocate all the funds that they asked for. We spread it across the groups. So have they been um, directed towards the different community boards? Uh, I especially look at the Otaki Montessori Preschool. Um, they might want to um, apply for a community grant to up, top up what it is they've done because it didn't meet, quite meet the criteria. Correct. So that would be one where um, the, with the Montessori, that it's not um, eligible under this particular grant um, because it's not a waste minimisation outcome, but we would absolutely not just say no. We could work with them and we've got a funding coordinator and council and make them aware of the other channels because it is a great initiative that we would like to see yeah. happen regardless. Yeah. And if I just prefer five, page 521, uh, just talks to the um, date time frames with regards to your application process. I was just curious to know, um, there's quite a, it seems to me to be quite a lag between when the application is open, which is in July, processed in August nice and quick, but then um, they don't actually find out till December, which is a, a busy time and, and could potentially be problematic for people to try and do what it is they want to do. Is there any reason why it takes so long to get the dollars out of them? Yes, yeah, so a couple of reasons. So December was initially when we were going to be having the Grace Allocation Subcommittee, so they will know ASAP um, now that after today when we and um, we make the decision. Um, but I guess th I totally understand between you know processing in August to even November, it is quite a time. And that is because there is this other category that is happening in the background, the seed funding, that is a two-step process and there's an EOI expression of interest and a review panel for that one because it's much more and it's much more thorough. Um, so and it just means that there's one council meeting. Uh, prior to 2020, it used to be two council meetings um, and that process was reviewed and streamlined. So it's already been streamlined once because that's my next question, is there ways to streamline this even more or is it... I believe so, especially with those... Uh, for example, like the Montessori, you know, is there another way maybe outside the grants that we can just help make these things, yeah. uh, these very non-political, uh, or yeah, they're, they're, they're no-brainers, so how can we make them happen ASAP? Yeah, cool. absolutely. Okay. Thank you very much for your answers. Thank you, and thank you for your very good questions. Who's next? Councillor Hanford. Yeah, kia ora korua. Thanks for the awesome mahi and great to be considering this and to, for those of us who aren't on the, the committee that they would normally go to, so it's, it's great to be able to have oversight over them. Just a question around, and one of the Councillor Halliday has already asked around ways to potentially streamline this process and as you said yourself, Eilish, like get these kind of no-brainer things happening both for people and the planet. Um, in terms of Parapara Umu College SEER group, has have conversations been had with them about Kind of ways that their initiative could be modified to maybe meet more of the or, or meet the specific criteria that currently they're they're not meeting and also then what support might be available to them aside from um, this process um great question we haven't had the specific conversations yet just waiting to see what the final outcome will be but that is exactly what we're going to be doing so within the just sort of uh reasoning about why we've had to uh, decline that application um, because it's an ineligible purpose, you know, potentially suggesting reusables or other, if they really, that's not going to work for them, reusables, and they do have to stick with the disposables, is mm -hmm. there some other funding source that we could connect it to that kind of has more of a community lens? Um, yeah, but right. we would be absolutely working with them on that rather than just saying, no, too bad. So yeah. that conversation, I'm assuming not, but probably couldn't have happened before like after they'd submitted their application and you reviewed it and went mm, and then you couldn't you can't you can't really go back to them and say if you modified this maybe it would meet and then reapply that's not that's not really allowed. Um, in some cases, de depends on the scope. So in some cases, um, if an element of a project is ineligible and ineligible, we'll let them know, and um, we can sort of change it a little bit. But they would have to completely um, rescope yeah. that, recost that, and we were already heavily over allocated. Yeah. So we actually are, yeah. So it wasn't something that we were able to do this year, but we're happy to work going forward because it is a complete rescope of what they were doing. 
and what they were suggesting. Yeah, okay, thank you. Councillor Wilson. Oh, actually, <coughs> it's just been addressed. Asked and answered. So, I'm not seeing any more questions, so I'm looking for some... Oh. 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 Thank you. Uh, sorry. Uh, thank you, um, Your Worship. Uh, just a few questions, and, and I'm obviously um, acutely aware of the timing and the day. Uh, in terms of the, when you talk about the oversubscription, knowing, of course, that in this current round you had a split between 20,000 in one um, fund and then 10,000 in the other, I'm just trying to wrap my head around it. Is that a normal um, sort of, oh, sorry, in terms of how you allocated that 30,000 for that actual sort of waste levy uh, minimization efforts, uh, is there some sort of formula that is applied to sort of set what that annual rate is to um, incentivize waste minimization activities? There is within the policy, um, when it was reviewed, um, the community projects, which is our most common oversubscribed over category, um, it will be advertised between 10 and, uh, sorry, between 20 and 30K um, every year. Um, the other two, uh, the community projects and then the seed funding, sort of get evaluated how much will be advertised depending on other uh, projects within the waste team. So, for example, we're trying to... Um, progress the the resource recovery hub so that's why that has been given so much mm. funding this year and it will go forward for the next few years um, and so balancing that has been been the but yeah um, but there is within the policy there is the, the 20 to 30 depending on what other budgetary considerations there are um, for the activities across the waste Thank team. You. Kia ora how do I? Um, any more? So I'm looking for a mover and a seconder. Moved Councillor Wilson Seconded, Councillor Hanford. Any debate? I put that all in favour. Please say aye. Aye. Against. That's carried. Thank you so much. Congratulations on a brilliant report. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much. The fact that it took very little time is a reflection of the amount of work that went into it. <laughs> the community groups will be stoked. <laughs> okay. So we have confirmation of minutes. We've, we've just got a couple of things to do before we get there. So 525, confirmation of minutes. Any questions around those minutes? Can I have a mover? One question, madam. Uh, just, um, where is it? Point eight, page 526. Council Lawrence Kirby shared a few words relating to an item 11.1. .1. Just kind of wondering what those words were. <laughs> <laughs> He doesn't know what to resile from. <laughs> I'm not even going to say anything. <laughs> won't, won't be able to put any words in this time. Okay, um, can I have a mover and a seconder? Moved Councillor Coe, seconded Councillor, yep. seconded the Deputy Mayor. All in favour, please say aye. Aye against, that's carried. Um, we've done our public speaking time earlier, which is a relief that we're not spending 40 minutes doing that now. Um, so we have nothing on item 13. So we're moving to public excluded. Can I have a mover that we move into public excluded, please? We have Councillor Halliday, second of the Deputy Mayor. All in favour, please say aye. Aye, against, that's carried. We're now in public excluded and we welcome this report on waste minimisation seed funding. Sorry, we'll just wait for the live streaming. Hi, there are those online. <laughs> 